So guys, it's been a minute, like it's been a minute. Who is she, guys? Who is she? Guys, I'm glowing. I am glowing. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Akusia Adoma. And yes, I know I've been away. I'm not here to rant, okay? We are getting to business, okay? This bag, okay, this bag, hmm, it's so simple. The tutorial is detailed. I'm going to teach you all the detail. You see, I've been busy going to Pinterest. I've been seeing uh, these cute bags, but I decided to make my version okay. So the Pinterest one is normally four braids, but mine is three because I wanted to add this locker in order to... Guys, just take a look. Like, we are not here to talk much. You need your t-shirt yarn now. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that... I opened my yarn shop, okay? That's the business I'm into now, guys. And it's all thanks to my mom. Shout out to my mother. If you're watching this, she always watches my video. Thank you so much for believing in the brand. So, yes, you can purchase t shirt yarn from me. You can purchase all types of acrylic yarns as well. Or cotton yarns, like I have everything. Just hit me up in my DM on Instagram and I'm good to go. I have a yarn shop. I'll be linking it in the description box below. But not here to rant we are going to business you need two of the t-shirts yarns you need two of them okay mine is 500 grams so if you purchase two some will be left let me show you what was left so you see a chunk is left which can be used for another project so it's kind of like one and a half but with this one i used a leftover yarn i've had for over two years to you know intertwine with the braids i'm making all right, let's get right into business. As I said, I'm using two of the 500 grams, the blue one, the deep blue one. And I had this leftover yarn for the light blue one, but I'm using just a little for the intertwining of the braids. Okay, so you are going to need a 6.0 millimeter hook. Um, you can go up to as high as 8.0, but remember that if you go high, um, your gauge becomes different from mine. So I recommend that you use the same type of hook. Um, I'll be using this chain strap. I'm so obsessed with this chain strap. Okay, it has the metallic ring underneath. So you don't need to buy it separately. It comes in package with my yarn shop. And this is also a very cute tape measure in my new hook set okay so i'm still using my aluminium hooks which i've had for over five years now and yeah i'm so excited with this i'm using the 6.0 millimeter hook um apparently when i began i thought i would use this but i ended up not using it i used a different type which you'll be seeing at the end of the video so yeah i have so much different types of bag accessories and i was quite confused with this one so i wanted something simple okay so but then i have all these in my yarn shop as i said you should check it out and purchase um okay so yeah you need some stitch markers as well um i hope i didn't forget anything but let's get right into it so first of all you are going to pick up your t-shirt yarn make a slip knot as you can see um, and then insert your hook into the slip knot. And then we are going to take your hook, wrap the yarn around your hook and pull through the loop, okay? So we are supposed to have this. This is your first chain. And then you are going to chain a total of 21. So this is the second, the third, the fourth. So wrap the yarn around the hook and pull through just like how you start the base for every normal project so we are going to chain a total of 21 i mean yeah i'll see you so quick recapping i have this chart that i have to show you of the number of things you are going to do for this bag so please take a screenshot to know exactly what we are doing we are doing the very first section which is 34 is to 24 centimeters meaning the height is going to be 34 centimeters and the base is going to be 24 centimeters so i'm done with my chain of 21 and when you place the tip measure it should be you know within the 24 centimeter range as shown from the chat below so yeah that is what we are going to do and our gauge becomes different so we can't have the accurate you know number but you, you must be close to 24 centimeters okay 
So, uh, yes, afterwards, you are going to chain an extra one as a turning chain. So, in total, you are going to have 21. And then you are going to move to the next stitch, okay? So, um, locate the second stitch from the hook, okay? So, yeah, let me just grab it over there, as you can see, as I'm using the hook to demonstrate to you. You are going in, inside the space, okay? So yes, insert your hook in the space, in the braid there, insert, pull through, you have two loops on the hook, yarn over, and pull through all two loops. You are going to the next space, locate the next, okay, which is over there. Now insert your hook into the space. Yarn over, pull through. You have two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through or two loops. So, yes, that is a single crochet stitch. And we are going to apply this in all the spaces, okay? So, you insert your hook normally. And then you pull through. You have two loops on the hook. You are going to yarn over and pull through all two loops. And, yeah. Let's do that again. Insert your hook into the space. The next space, pull through. You have two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all two loops. And I must admit, t-shirt yarn working is quite um, harder than the regular one uh, because it's much more thicker. But as far as you are used to it, it becomes more natural. So you are going to single crochet to the end of the row. I'm going to meet you. At the end of the row so we applied our single crochet stitches all to the end okay i just want to show you how i apply my single crochet in the last stitch so we are just going to insert your hook okay and then pull through yarn over pull through all two loops and please mind you by the end of the row you should have a total of 21 stitches okay 21 stitches okay and yes, as I said, it, it, it depends on you, okay? You might be using any different type of yarn, but it must have a width, a, a base of 21, a 24 centimeters, okay? So afterwards, you are going to chain one. As you can see, it raises the height up a little. And then you are going to apply your very first stitch in the same, you know, stitch that you chained one, okay? Over there, okay? Let me focus. So over there where the hook is pointing, where I'm pointing, that is where you are going to apply your single crochet. If you do it in the next stitch, you are, you are rather decreasing, okay? So you are missing one stitch, and that's one thing you should take notice, okay? So the chain one does not count as a stitch, okay? But we are rather applying the very first single crochet over there. So insert your hook, pull through, okay? Pull through. We are going to have two loops on the hook, Yarn over and pull through all the rest of the two loops, okay? So that's your first single crochet. And as I said, um, you have your stitch markers, right? It's really important in this case. Please put your stitch marker in the very first stitch. Always, anytime you make the very first stitch, put your stitch marker there because I have also this challenge in skipping stitches or rather increasing them. So it helps you keep a straight edge. So I'm going to move to the next stitch and single crochet. And yes, as usual, single crochet in each stitch till you get to the end of the row, okay? So we're applying single crochet stitches nibbly in the spaces till we get to the end of the row. And I'm going to show you how I end. So now um, I'm now at the end, okay? So this is going to be the last stitch just take notice of that. You are going to insert your hook in that last stitch. And it's also important to place your stitch marker in the last stitch so that you don't keep missing stitches as I do. I'm really fond of that. So insert your hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through, sorry. When you have two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through, or two loops, and then grab your stitch marker and place it over there. And then we are going to uh, move to the next row. 
So for the next row, we are just going to do the regular single crochet. As always, make sure you apply your single crochet in the very first stitch after chaining your one, which does not count as a stitch. And yeah, that, that's, that's going to be the process, okay? Just regular single crochets throughout. Um, as I said, anytime you make your very first stitch, grab your stitch marker and put it there in, to avoid you from... Um, messing up okay it's really important because you are keeping a straight edge any increase or decrease will disfigure the bag okay so yes and we have different tensions so that one too is even a, a huge problem on its own so yes so we are going to um, keep a tight tension throughout the single crochet and yeah, we are going to i'm going to meet you at the end of the row and then yeah it's basically going to be single crochet rows so here i made a total of 30 rows of single crochet keeping a tight tension keeping it simple okay so now no matter the type of yarn you are using you should arrive close to 34 centimeters for the height i'm going to measure that quickly for you and then for the width it should be 25 centimeters okay i mean the base the starting base and we have different tensions so you might end up having a little bit lesser and you know lesser okay but it should be closer okay lesser or more okay but it shouldn't be different okay it should be around 25 centimeters for the base and then 34 centimeters for the height as you can see on your screen so now you are going to fold the bag just like this so this is the look we are we are coming in for but then we are going to clean the base around okay the back so we applied our last stitch okay afterwards we are not going to put a stitch in that same stitch move to the next and then single crochet going towards the opposite direction going towards the right the other direction okay so you are going to apply single crochet stitches in each space you find, okay? Keep a simple, accurate tension, okay? So insert your hook, yarn over, put your two. And yeah, basically single crochet stitches, one in each space you find, not two, or else you are going to have this bumpy effect. Okay, we are cleaning up the edge to, you know, help us. So yes, single crochet all around till you get to the next edge i'll show you what to do now at the next edge okay you are basically this is the last but one space okay before we get to the very corner space okay so just single crochet and yeah this is going to be the last space so yes insert your hook in that corner space it's quite tight but maneuver your way to insert the hook and then a yarn over pull through or two loops okay so now you are going towards the other side and looking for each space and putting a single crochet there to clean up the edge so you're going to single crochet all along this edge to get to the next corner In regards to the next corner you are going to apply the same thing make sure you do not put two stitches in the same space okay just keep it simple and single crochet back down the opposite side okay so yes um make sure you weave in the extra yarn with your darning needle um, just to keep it simple as you can see by the way guys this is my new hook set i have some in stock so come and grab this um it's limited okay come and grab your hook sets i have the most affordable hook sets now you can check in the markets please so yeah come come order yours anyway yes i'm just weaving in with my darning needle i got it from the hook set i'm so excited about this okay so yes just weaving nicely and continue with your single crochet edging um yeah so as you can see i'm, I'm single crocheting all around when i get to the corner i'll show you what to do So we are in the next corner space, okay. 
you are going to apply your single crochet just one in the corner okay so insert yarn over pull through you have two loops on the hook yarn over pull through two okay then you turn the opposite no do not go in the same stage go in the next for the opposite um, opposite side and single crochet or uh, around the edges okay so yeah just single crochet borders finally getting to the last space okay you are going to put your last single crochet over there and yeah you are done okay so you chain one and then pull the loop grab your pair of scissors cut it off weaving the ends with a darning and needle and yeah we'll proceed to the next stage okay so our bag is coming out cute a little by little i'm just loving it okay uh but this is the very first stage and <laughs> let's begin the next with the next session we are going to do the sides of the bag the two sides of the bag but i'll demonstrate one to you so as usual i'm going to make your slip knot and chain a total of five okay so this is the first stitch one okay and then two three four and then i'm going to add one five okay so afterwards you are going to locate the next stitch but this time we are going in the back bump not in the regular one as we did for the very first section okay i have my reasons for that okay so you see this brace you turn it over okay this is the back bump i hope you can see where i'm inserting the hook that is the back bump that is where you are going to insert your hook instead of the regular you know space that we did for the previous one so they are inserting the back bump okay if you are not seeing this color please pause and rewatch. so insert your hook over there and then pull through yarn over pull through all two loops just the regular single crochet okay that's the first stitch we are going to the next stitch the back bump of the next stitch over there again as you can see okay we are going to insert your hook yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through all two loops okay so we have two stitches now insert into the next the back bump as you can see yarn over pull through two pull through the loop sorry yarn over pull through all two loops so there's a third one and then insert there's the next one yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and then you are going to finally complete with your last single crochet in the back bump over there so that one is even easier over here as you can see uh <laughs> working with t-shirt yarn is not a joke quite tighter okay so yeah go on and insert your hook in the last stitch single crochet and chain one so yeah you are supposed to have these like this okay so you are going to chain one and then turn over insert your hook in the very first stitch as usual and then single crochet so you're going to single crochet okay and since this is a short base it's not really necessary to keep a stitch marker so if you are supposed to count in your head you are supposed to have four stitches for this okay so this is the third one 
and there's the fourth one finally so yes four stitches per row you can count it in your head so that if you miss one or it's three in any case or five you have an idea that you are missing something okay so as you can see in the background i already did one of it okay so we are going to do a total of 12 rows and we are supposed to have a total of 16 centimeter for it so yeah after adding the border you are supposed to have a total of 16 centimeters so i've made my total of 12 rows we are just going to add the border around just like how we did for the big one it's quite simple so i just did my last stitch i are just going to move to the directly opposite place not in the same stitch just go to the next space towards the edge single crochet just like how you see all around okay one single crochet in each space so yeah not in this same stitch go to the next as you can see and single crochet so we are going to single crochet all around in each space and i will i'll will meet you i'll meet you at the edge okay so we are at the edge okay the very first the first edge after single crochet make sure you put just a stitch there and you can crochet over the loop okay the loop at the edge so that's the very first thing we we did okay so you have this leftover yarn that you can crochet on so make sure you hide it you hide it under the seams as you crochet one stitch in each space so single crochet and i'll meet you at the end of the row so yes i did a single crochet okay this is the last one and i'm going to slip stitch to join the very first one we made for that side okay so insert your hook and then slip stitch to join so yarn over pull through it's quite tight so insert yarn over and pull through and slip stitch then you chain one pull the yarn and then cut with a pair of scissors pick up your darning needle and weave in the excess yarn so we have three items now the bag the main bag body and then the two sides okay so yes we are here to get to the interesting part so as you can see on your screen we have made the main body and then the two sides okay we are now about to do the three and then the four bars the short ones and the longer ones so we are going to make a slip knot okay and then make a chain of 26. so here we have it a chain of 26 okay we are going to do slip stitch okay so insert your hook in the back bump of the um, stitches as I showed you previously. Okay, and then this time you are not single crocheting but you are slip stitching. So just pull the loop on the hook. Insert. I'm sorry my hands was covering this part. But just insert. Pull. When you have two loops, pull through the loop left on the hook. Insert. Yarn over, pull through. When you have two loops, yarn over. Don't yarn over. Just pull through. Sorry. So insert, pull through, and then pull through again, nicely. Insert. We are inserting in the back bump in case you are not noticing. So yeah, the previous one I showed you. Insert. 
pull through, pull through the loop, insert, yarn over, pull through, you have two loops, pull through the le loop left on the hook. So you are going to slip stitch all the way down, okay? Just slip stitch all the way down. So yes, getting to the end, I'm going to apply my last slip stitch in the back bump. And uh, yeah. So yeah, just slip stitch, okay? Nicely. And then I'm going to chain one to raise the height before you turn. So this time I'm going to do back loop, um, slip stitches, back loop, okay? So you insert, okay? And then, like, let me just show you. See, this is the back loop, okay? This is the back loop. Okay, let me, let me demonstrate something to you. See, there are normally two loops, you know. Normally we go inside the regular loop, but this time we are going to the back loops, okay? When we just look at the braided parts let me focus well yeah so when you look at the braid, braided parts you realize that there are two aspects okay the front and the back so you are going to the back when when you turn it like this uh, i hope you get it so yeah we are slip stitching in the back loops okay so after chaining one you are going to slip stitch in the back loop So kindly uh, slip stitch to so insert, okay, just like this. Pull through, you have two loops on the hook, and then you pull again through. That's a slip stitch. Make sure you keep a little bit loose tension. Otherwise, you with slip stitches, when it's really tight, it becomes very difficult to feel comfortable crocheting. So keep a loose stitch, okay, so insert. We are slip stitching in the back loops only as you can see and yeah slip stitch in the back loops till you get to the end of the row so yes we are almost at the end of the road last but one stitch so yeah back loops slip stitches as usual so slip stitch and then we are finally going to end with our final slip stitch over there so insert yarn over and then pull through okay nicely done nicely done so yeah we are we are going to do a total of six rows of slip stitches okay so always you chain one and then locate the back loops okay um uh, and then we slip stitch okay so yeah if you didn't see the previous one this is another opportunity for you to see the back loops okay so you realize that there are two loops. You are going to choose the back one and slip stitch. So yes, I'm going to slip stitch again. And then I'm going to do a total of six rows. Okay. So there's a third row. So I'll be adding three more rows. And then uh, I'll show you what to do next. So realize that with the taller session, we are going to do three of the um, rectangular, you know, shape. Okay, so we are going to do three. So after six rows of slip stitch, we are going to repeat the same process for two more times. And then we are going to use another light blue color, which it's not, com it's not compulsory. Okay, so I'll be using light blue color for the next section. So, yes, um, for the next session, we are going to chain a total of 16 and then we are going to locate the back bump again and apply your slip stitch just like how we did the first one. I'm sorry, I went off screen um, for this part, but you are going to see it. Okay, so yeah, slip stitch in the back bump and 
you are going to repeat this process so you get to the end of the row until you make a total of six again so the difference between this is um that the first one we change 26 the second one we change 16 so with that one you're going to do a total of um four with the lights blue a total of four with the deep blue you are going to do a total of three okay um just sh as shown in the diagram so yes, now we are going to do the arrangement, okay? So first of all, you place the light blue on top and then you connect with the stitch marker, okay? We are attaching a seam with a stitch marker, okay? So you put one up, one down, one up, one down. Then you connect it with the stitch marker, okay? So a seam. So one up, one down, one up, one down okay and then yeah that's it so first when you lay the deep blue you are now going to work with the light blue one up one down one up one down connecting with the stitch marker then you pick the next one the light the deep blue sorry you put one up then you raise the other side which is the light blue up then one will be down one will be up and then you each edge you connect it with the stitch marker I hope you know what I'm talking about, okay? But just observe. So, yes, I was having a little bit challenges with the stitch marker because the T-shirt yarn is quite thick, so I'm connecting it with the stitch marker. But, yes, whatever you do for this, you do it for the opposite side at seam. So, one up, one down, one up. The next one will be down, up, down, up. When it's up, down, up, down, the next one will be down, up, down, up. So, as you can see, this is what you are going to have. Okay, we had three sections of the light, um, four sections of the light blue and then three for the deep blue. And then we are going to use the stitch marker to connect it nicely before you even start slip stitching to join. So we are going to slip stitch all around. But first of all, we'll be connecting it to the main back portion. Okay, but we haven't even connected the sides. Okay, so we are going to do that and then we'll see how to connect this aspect. Okay. So you are going to pick your stitch marker and then we are going to create a border. But first, we are going to slip stitch at one of the far edge, okay? So you are going to slip stitch and afterwards, you are going to add a border in order to attach to the main back portion. So look for the back loops for both sides before you slip stitch to join. And yes, it's going to be a little bit tight, so... Whenever you get to where the stitch marker is, you are going to remove it and then continue with your back loop slip stitching, connecting the sides, okay? Connecting the, the, the parts to the, the, the edges. So here we have it as slip stitched work. Okay, so the next one is going to be a single crochet border. You are going to do two rows of single crochet border before you connect to the main body. So you are going to chain one, turn over, and then insert your hook um, in the, you know, where you slip stitch, the slip stitch place, and uh, single crochet, okay. So you are going to apply single crochet towards the edges nicely as you can see and then you are going to do an extra row of single crochet um, you can add three instead of two um, 
depending on how dripped you want the cover to be so yeah so here we have it two rows of single crochet we are now going to attach it to the main body as seen with a slip stitch okay so that it can cover it okay so yes let's just attach it before we attach the sides of the bag uh yeah this is how you're going to attach it let's put it on it okay this is the back portion so yeah you can just pull the yarn and cut or you can just and cut before you use the extra to slip stitch or you can just slip stitch along as seen Okay, this is the slip stitched work. Okay, so it's going to be like this, folded. Okay, I'm already seeing the beauty already. Even though I've not joined, I've not slip stitched the other side. Okay, we are going to do that off camera. Okay, so the other sides that join the front of the back, we are going to do it. But then we are going to do the side, we are going to slip stitch to join to the sides of the back, which I'll be showing you. But for the top aspect, um, it's just regular slip stitch around okay so yes i'm just going to pull some loop okay enough for me to help me uh, join the sides okay so i'm just going to cut it with a pair of scissors and then uh, proceed in joining So with this, I am going to use a darning needle to join much more easier. So I'm just going to thread my darning needle and then I'm just going to use a normal whip stitch to join. So off camera, I slip stitch the front part as you can see. Okay, and I added this locker. I also have it in my yarn store. Okay, so you can just get that one. <laughs> so yeah, 
it's much more easier i don't like sewing things I, i'm not ready to be sewing things on so i prefer this one um looks nicely very smooth and, and and easy to to fix so if you have not realized i also slip stitch to join the front side where the, it's braided where the braided part is um i lost that clip but i also added this chain strap okay and then I also did the other opposite side. I didn't line my bag yet because I'm not really perfect at it yet. So I'm practicing. But when I do line and um, do some three lining projects, I will show you the outcome. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial. This is the final outcome glowing. I, I just love blue. I'm pairing this blue bag with the African mermaid grab gun top I made on TikTok, which went almost viral. So... Yeah, I just love it. I, I just love this bag. It's much more simple. With three braids, you would uh, have a nice feel without having to use so much yarn, okay? So, yeah, I hope you love this bag project. Uh, no excuses. <laughs> if you don't have yarn, <laughs> hit me up. And let's talk business, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in another video. And stay safe. Leave a comment, okay? Leave a comment. Leave a like for this video. I, yeah. Thank you so much. Bye.